joining us with the news on QTV. My name is Diana Sumbwe. We take a look at stories making headlines. Government says it will go ahead to publish the Constitution Amendment Bill should the national dialogue process continue to delay. A five-year-old boy of Namala district has died after an ox cart he was on hit into a tree and in the process overturned. And now the news in detail. Government says it will go ahead to publish the Constitution Amendment Bill should the national dialogue process continue to delay. Justice Minister Given Lubinda says the government is concerned by how long it is taking to hold the national dialogue. Speaking when he held a meeting on human rights with British High Commissioner to Zambia, Fagas Cochrane Diet, and the European Union EU delegation at his office, Mr. Lubinda said government will, in this case, give the process only a few weeks. And Mr. Lubinda says it is surprising that no other political party other than the ruling Patriotic Front has made submissions towards the review of the Public Order Act. He has wondered why an issue that seems to be affecting political parties in the country has not received attention from those it affects. What we'll be doing is simply to follow the laid down uh, legislative procedure, which we willingly uh, forestalled to give space to this other very important process. And once we do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we'll have in any way affected the dialogue, because as far as we're concerned, uh, dialogue is not an event, and it should not be an event. The dialogue must be a process. And uh, as people dialogue, you must also see progress. You know, you, you cannot hide behind the need to consult and then stop work. You can't. You have to proceed. So it is my sincere hope that uh, the initiatives taken by the church, the initiatives taken by the Zambia Centre for Interparty Dialogue will continue and that uh, political players can, can discuss. And there are many things to talk about. Mm -hmm. There are many. I don't think it's only the Constitution. What we'll be doing... Meanwhile, British High Commissioner to Zambia, Fergus Cochrane Diet, says the UK shares the same concerns the Zambian government has over the delays in holding the national dialogue. Mr. Diet says the British Embassy is also surprised that the process that was started by the Commonwealth last year has not yielded any positive results to date. He has also noted the need for Zambia to consider making electoral reforms in view of how the country's 2016 general elections proved to be antagonistic. And the reason for that is that it is no secret that the uh, elections of 2016 um, uh, were, by Zambian standards, uh, quite antagonistic and have left um, a legacy of, 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 of Zambia which is rather polarised. Uh, and um, our concern is that um, if the underlying issues are not addressed, uh, then the next time round when we have the elections um, in 2021, uh, we could see uh, uh, progression um, on those fissures within Zambian society. And that's something which uh, uh, the Zambian government, I know the Zambian people and cooperating partners do not wish to see. So um, we um, agree, Honourable Minister, very much um, with you on the need for these reforms, because those are the reforms, from a technical point of view, those are the reforms um, which can make changes, uh, which can ensure that the environment in 2021 is better um, and that there can be a highly successful election. And the reason... And the Zambia Center for Inter-Party Dialogue, ZCID, says it has formally engaged the Ministry of Justice to release the Constitution Amendment Bill in view of the delayed national dialogue process. Spokesperson Jackson Silawe has told QTV News in an interview the ZCID has resolved that it is high time the amendment bill is made public for further deliberation by the general public. Mr. Slavoy observes that there is a lot of work that needs to be done in constitutional reforms, hence the need to have the bill released before it is taken to Parliament. He is hopeful that the Ministry of Justice will quickly give its position on the matter. Mr. Slavoy says that Zambians have a lot of expectations from the constitutional reforms. ZCID has now engaged fully the Ministry of Justice 
so that they can release the constitutional amendment bill so we can render input to it um, uh, in preparation of it being taken to parliament. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of reforms and um, we cannot continue to bicker. Uh, we cannot continue to, uh, to play semantics. We, cannot want, we do not want to play on who is this and that. I think as ZCID we do not have time for that. Zambians have got a lot of experience. And the Southern Center for the Constructive Resolution of Disputes, SACOD, has warned against rushing the national dialogue process. Executive Director Bonfest Chembe says rushing the dialogue process before dealing with all outstanding issues will be a disservice to the people of Zambia and to the process itself. Mr. Chembe has told QFM News that it is therefore key that all issues that are pending to be resolved are dealt with before the country could proceed with the national dialogue process. Mr. Chembe states that SACOD believes that such peace building process takes time. He notes that if in this case the national dialogue process is to produce meaningful results, there is need to ensure that the foundation is concrete and strong. Mr. Chembe says that this entails that a platform ought to be provided for a continuous back and forth on matters where there are disagreements on matters where consensus needs to be built. He says once such issues have been resolved, SACOD is proposing that the dialogue process commence in earnest. Because if you overlook the different, the different concerns that various stakeholders may have and simply rush into the process, you risk starting a process that would have been started prematurely. So from a support point of view, we believe that it is important that we take our time as a people and as a country in as far as ensuring that uh, consensus is built on the national dialogue process. That is one. Uh, secondly, we believe that it is equally important to ensure that once everything has been put in place, we start the dialogue process in earnest and focus on issues that matter. Yes, it, people may have concerns here and there, but it is important in, in terms of uh, the delays in starting the national dialogue process. But it is key that we ensure that all outstanding issues, all burning issues are addressed and are addressed to the satisfaction of stakeholders involved in the national dialogue process. Rushing the process for whatever our reasons, in our view, would be a great disservice to this country, it would be a great disservice to the stakeholders, and it would be a great disservice to the process itself. Because it A five-year-old boy of Namala district has died after an Oscar he was in on hit into a tree and in the process overturned. Zambia police spokesperson Esther Katongo has identified the boy as Sylvester Milimo. Mrs. Katongo has told Q News in a statement that the accident happened on Sunday, the 2nd of September, around 15 hours at Mbeza Market. And Ms. Katongo has also confirmed the death of a four-year-old girl of Nchelenga district, identified as Esther Mwila, who died after being hit by a Mercedes-Benz car belonging to Zesco. She narrates that the accident happened around 1740 hours at Shindi Village, Chief Kambwali's area, when the girl came out of a taxi that was parked off the road and got hit by the oncoming motor vehicle. Ms. Katongo says after hitting the minor, the driver, Sylvester Mwape 54 of Kawamba District, also lost control of the vehicle when he went off the road and later overturned. She notes that he, however, survived with general body pains, while two other passengers who were in the vehicle sustained multiple injuries and admitted to St. Paul's Mission Hospital. Ms. Katongo says the body of the girl is lying in the same hospital's mortuary awaiting post-mortem. Meanwhile, the Zambia police says it is still investigating the cause and arsonist suspected to be behind the fire that cutted the Lusaka city market in July last year. Spokesperson, spokesperson Esther Katongo says if the police had concluded the investigations of this fire and other infernos that have gutted markets since then, it would have informed the public. Ms. Katongo has told Q News by telephone that the police did promise to get back to the public once it concluded the investigations. She states that the fact that the police has not issued any update on the fires, it means that investigations are still ongoing. 
Mrs. Katongo says the police cannot therefore apprehend anyone in connection with the fires until it concludes their investigations. She says the police will therefore have to wait no, no matter how long the investigations will take and depending on the information that will be established to apprehend those behind the fires. Asked whether the police has in this case made any headways in the said investigations, Ms. Katongo has responded by saying this is not how the police conduct investigations. If we had concluded with the investigations, we would have gotten back to the members of the public as we promised. So okay. the fact that we are quiet, it means that we are still working on the same. So it has been a year since uh, we had uh, the way to market the bank. Could yes, you... yes. It, it's not like the way you see it, to say you just go and pick people. You need to investigate. And the people you get should be the people that are connected to that. If you don't have them at that particular moment, you cannot just go and pick anyone. So we just have to wait until whether it will take whatever, how long it will take. It depends on the information which you will get as police, which will help us in apprehending those people. Have you made any headways? Do you have any names in mind? No, we, we, that's not how the investigations are. Are done. That's not how we do investigations. Are we like to see anybody prosecuted over those uh, fires? It will depend on the outcome of the investigation. If we had concluded. The Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, CCPC, has warned that it will impose penalties on schools that force pupils to buy uniforms and other school requirements from their shops. The CCPC has particularly warned all schools that are in the habit of tying school fees to the purchase of uniforms and books and other activities that have no direct link to education. CCPC Public Relations Officer Namkolo Kasumba says the commission is aware that some schools force pupils out of class for failure to purchase uniforms from their schools or their PTA shops. In a statement to QTV News, Ms. Kasumba says the commission is concerned with this growing tendency. She says that some conduct, she states that such conduct disadvantages the public and constitutes unfair contract terms. Ms. Kasumba says that this is in addition to distorting the competition landscape among the players in the provision of school requirements. She says the commission will not hesitate to impose appropriate penalties on any person who violates the Competition and Consumer Protection Act number 24 of 2010. A total of 750,000 kwacha has been given out of 156 churches in Lusaka under the Presidential Empowerment Initiative Fund. The churches have also received incubators, oil-making machines and block-making machines. Speaking during a signing ceremony of Memorandum of Understanding between the initiative and the Pastors' Fellowship, PEIF National Coordinator Clement Tembo, said the 156 churches are from all the seven constituencies of Lusaka. Mr. Tembo says the initiative could not leave out the church in its empowerment programs as it is the custodian of the people. Mr. Tembo says that President Edgar Lungu remains committed to empowering the vulnerable in the communities. Because the church is the custodian of the people. And without the church, there is no true leadership. It is in the church that you find the real people that are struggling. It's in the church that you find the real people that are called vulnerable by others. And yet, the president and our team, we are saying these are violent. Amen. We will not let you down. When I was talking to the committee, I said, may we identify pastors, bishops, or the clergy from all the seven constituencies. The funds we are releasing today are meant for all the seven constituencies. And when I walked in, I said, Papa, uh, uh, where are the other pastors? So he just comforted me. I told me, no, they are still on their way. I said, where do people want to reject to man? He said, no, 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 no. They are on their way. And in my conclusion, allow me to challenge the church. We are aware about our other faiths and religions. When you look at the uh, Muslim community, and these are they are very united. Yes. But it's only the Christians who are divided. The Christians will find it no, we am Pentecostal, I'm Chani, but we are but one God. Why should other religions beat us? And yet we serve the living God. We know about great leaders who have died. 
but the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ is alive. So, we'll say thank you very much. Because the and representing the 156 churches, Pastors Fellowship Chairman Ephraim Kambanja commended President Lungu for including the church in the empowerment program. We wish to thank the President, His Excellency Indiga Chagwa Lungu, for the presidential initiative that is aimed at empowering the needy. As the Bible says, when I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you kept me water. Yes. Now this is somehow fulfillment of scripture. There are people, our members, who are in need. Yeah. And the government is saying, no, we are there for you. Yeah. What an honor, what a privilege. Yes. We are always quick at criticizing, but when they are doing good, let's clap for them. Yeah. As a church, we are standing on faith ground. As long as it's scripture, we stand for it. As long as it's in the scripture, we stand for it. As long as it's written in the book, we will stand and back you. So this is a noble God, sir. If you can convey our message to His Excellency that the people of Lusaka, the clergy that came together are more than excited. Because we also believe that it is every government that is, put, is ordained by God. Yeah. Yeah. God is the one that appoints kings. Yes. Yeah. And it's the same one that I said in Romans 13 verse 1 that we should always pray yeah. and honor those who are in authority. Yeah. And especially for such a time like this one. We wish to the Center for Trade Policy and Development, CTPD, has recommended that the Zambian delegation at the for Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC, prioritizes renegotiating Chinese debt. The center says Zambia is at a high risk of debt distress, and the Chinese government has time and again signaled that China might be open to supporting the Zambian government to restructure its debt portfolio. CTPD Executive Director I Isaac Mwaipopo says Zambia must therefore take advantage of this platform and bring to the table a conversation around the need to renegotiate its Chinese debt. Mr. Mwaipopo says Zambia should avoid at all costs acquiring more debt during this summit. He says transparency and accountability in loan acquisitions, the terms and structure of Chinese loans to Zambia, and details about how they are secured must be transparent. Mr. Moipopo says the center remains deeply concerned about the growing negative publicity of Zambia, which has now penetrated the international media space, as there is need to come together as a country and find common ground that can help to resolve the current situation. He notes that as the 2019 budget debates draw closer, there is serious need to put heads together in finding lasting solutions as the current debt situation might get severe. As Africa heads or states uh, gather in Beijing for the Forum for China and Africa Cooperation, uh, commonly known as FOCAC, it will be very important that uh, they advance recommendations that would help African countries to benefit from the relationship that has been uh, going on between the People's Republic of China and a number of African countries. Uh, the Center for Trade Policy and Development is also cognizant of the fact that uh, one of the many or the big challenges that a number of African countries are grappling with is a rise in public debt commonly coming uh, from the People's Republic of China. It would be important that the African heads of state also uh, table a conversation around the need to manage the debt that is being contracted by a number of these countries as it is becoming increasingly evident that a number of them actually have challenges in terms of paying back these loans. The other conversation that is worth having as they have the various meetings in Beijing is around transparency and accountability in terms of the acquisition of some of these loans. It's not many clear in many African countries in terms of uh, the kind of terms and uh, conditionalities that these loans come with and this 
is actually posing a serious threat on the future generation of most of the African countries. To the Zambian delegation, I think uh, one of the things that they need to also have is a bigger conversation around how uh, possibly Zambia can restructure the debt that it owes to the People's Republic of China. As Africa heads or states uh, gather in the European Union EU has expressed concern with the situation for circumstantial children in various Zambian correctional facilities, describing the situation as worrying. European Union in Zambia Human Rights, Justice and Democracy Manager Patricia Penetia says it is for this reason that the EU has been working with various non-governmental organizations in the country to provide extra support to children aside from what their mothers receive. She has disclosed that the European Union will soon be evaluating the help that it has been given to the circumstantial children through the NGOs. Meanwhile, Ms. Penetia has disclosed that the EU will start from starting from next year focus on the provision of education and skills training in Zambia's correctional facilities. She has further stated that her government will release a list of programs that will be supported under skills training projects before the end of 2018. Of legal assistance, uh, not only through NGOs but also with uh, the, the, through the, the PLEAD uh, program, um, where, um, where some uh, legal desks have been established in, uh, in some prisons in, uh, in uh, Livingstone or in, uh, in the Copper Belt and uh, in uh, Lusaka last week. Um, and uh, we are also uh, very much, uh, um, I mean, it's not only at the operational level, but we are also uh, very much involved at the, 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 the policy levels. For example, we were behind also, we, 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 we are very, um, uh, and in terms, for example, for the, the rights for, for, for prisoners to vote, um, we are also following this, uh, this, ship, this uh, issue, and uh, we are also providing some, uh, some assistance in order for, for, the, the, for this uh, new uh, right uh, to, be, uh, to be implemented. Of legal assistance. President Edgar Lungu has been called upon to address the issue of value addition in his speech to open parliament this month. By Z campaign founder Evans Goma says his organization also expects President Lungu to discuss how government intends to create industries in the newly created districts. Mr. Ngoma says Bayzed has observed that there are many agricultural products that are being produced in the new districts where there is a competitive advantage compared to other districts. In a walk-in interview with QTV News, Mr. Ngoma said Bayzed believes that if industries for value addition are set up in these districts, government will be able to cut the rural urban drift. Mr. Ngoma says this is because people will now be leaving towns and going to newly created districts. He has further urged President Lungu to woo investors from China, where he is attending the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC, to come to partner with locals in Zambia. So we are saying, wherever you go, I'm glad to hear that he's up there in China. Let him woo investors that should come and partner with the locals here. We want also to be partners in these uh, new businesses that are coming in. As they register, they should have uh, Mr. Evans Kazonga Ngoma as a partner, or John Daka, or Mr. Piri out there, or Bachangwe, to partner with the new investors so that we are not only partners on paper, but also when it comes to payments of uh, dividends, we should depart. Yeah. We should also be getting the percentage that we deserve. And uh, what is expected also, as uh, by that, we want government to try and make. Medicine General Insurance Managing Director Chavala Lumwe has bemoaned low levels of insurance penetration in the country. Speaking during a memorandum of understanding between National Union of Public and Private Educators of Zambia, NUPES, Freedom 83 Brokers, Mr. Lumwe says it is for this reason that Madison General Insurance will ensure that they increase awareness. 
Mr. Lumbwe says his organization is looking at repackaging its products to levels where they will meet the needs at all levels of the sectors. He says Madison General Insurance has invested in technology to ensure that they provide a platform for an insurance product to be sold anywhere online. Mr. Lumbwe says as a mature and competitive market participant, Madison General has been able to deliver consistent profitable results whilst maintaining market share. One of the things which I'll echo, uh, what my colleague from uh, Freedom 83 indicated, is the issue of level of insurance penetration uh, in this country. It's still very low and uh, it's our responsibility, those of us who are privileged uh, to work in this industry, uh, that is ourselves as underwriters, the intermediaries, the agents, to try and increase awareness. And just as well, you are here today because we are soon beginning the insurance week. And the insurance week tries to cover that aspect. But it's not enough. Uh, it's not enough. And also, we need to start looking at repackaging uh, our products uh, to the level where they should be able to meet the needs of the insuring public at every level uh, of uh, the economy and in every sector. Um, today, this initiative, I would like to congratulate uh, Freedom 83 for bringing up the concept and proposal which they sold to us. And uh, most importantly, we should acknowledge uh, yourselves, the uh, executive president, for accepting to aggregate your members. Yeah, uh, usually uh, it's very difficult. If people are fragmented, it becomes expensive and it's difficult to bring your product to them. But thanks uh, to you uh, for taking the initiative of, of creating that aspect of aggregation. One of the things. And speaking at the same event, National Union of Public and Private Educators of Zambia and Appears President Victor Muyumba said the Memorandum of Understanding will help its members to insure vehicles at a very reduced rate. Mr. Muyumba has appealed to its members to learn to insure their property. We really would want each and every party to this agreement to live up to its expectations so that in the end the teacher is not disappointed because we are here to deliver to the satisfaction of the member. And I know Boris Madison has done a number of projects with the teachers and other workers. So far, um, uh, I think I want to be wrong to say you are the best. Yeah, you are the best and uh, you will not have difficulties to win teachers. Because once they hear the name Madison, they uh, are reminded of effectiveness and efficiency. And we are going to ensure that uh, even this particular... And at the same event, Freedom 83 Broker Operations Director Ken Katongo thanked Medicine General Insurance Company Zambia for being a long-term partner to the association. What we've just uh, come to uh, witness here is a signing ceremony of, of an event that uh, has uh, culminated into this uh, product that's going to be very, very uh, successful as we imagine it to be. It's a partnership between uh, Madison General Insurance uh, in UPES, as well as ourselves, uh, the brokers. It's an insurance product that uh, is targeted at, at the union members. Our consumption is uh, widely targeted at union, union members, uh, with our risk area being uh, Madison. We, as the brokers, provide support to Madison itself, as well as to the union members uh, themselves as they consume uh, this uh, insurance. We know insurance uh, penetration is, 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 is quite low, but uh, we are hoping that going with the unions, the unions have a large presence, have large numbers. Maybe if we take insurance through that route, we can actually then uh, turn that situation and have a large penetration of insurance and a large consumption of insurance. I think that is what essentially brings us uh, here together. And it's a very, very cost effective and very competitively priced insurance product that is uh, to be experienced and uh, witnessed by partners all. And uh, we hope this is a journey for many, many other products that Madison can roll out to the unions, as well as to the members. And we, as the broker, could just be excited to implement uh, and explain and sell to 
all our members and uh, union members alike and the market out there. So I think that will be all from you, from us as, as it's going to keep. What we've just... Uh... On that note, we come to the end of our news. From me, Diana Sombwe, thank you for watching.